Well, good evening and welcome to the 33rd annual AQS Quilt Week in Paducah. Tonight, we celebrate the quilting artistry of quilt makers from all around the world. Do you know, sometimes we don't say thank you nearly enough. Back in the 1980s, when Bill and Meredith Schrader founded the American Quilter Society, they wanted to recognize the artistry of today's quilt makers. We have come a long way since then. From the $25,000 in cash awards that we gave in 1985 to the $125,000 we will be awarding tonight. And so I think that there's a big thank you in order. So if you would all join me in a big round of applause for Bill and Meredith Schrader to say thank you for all they've done for the world of quilting. <laughs> Bill and Meredith knew that educating people on how to make quilts was necessary so future generations would continue making quilts. Now I would like to introduce the cast of characters. You know, I've been afraid I was going to say that all day. It, it really says cast of instructors who are teaching at this year's show. And so our judges this year have been Katie Pasquini Massapust, Paula Nadelstern, and Sue Nichols. Our faculty... <laughs> And believe me, they had a mammoth job in picking out the winners for this year's show. Our faculty includes Alex Anderson, Frida Anderson, Kathleen Andrews, Jody Barrows, Carol Butsky, Pat and Arlen Christ, Carol Elmore, Lisa Erlinson, Gail Garber, Lynn Harris, Laura Hine, Karen Hellaby, Mary Kerr, Carla Klopp, Donna Koistra, Cindy Lobeck, Nancy Mahoney, Marty Michelle, Stacy Michelle, Philippa Naylor, Sue Patton, Sue Pelland, and you know what? We have three Sues all in a row, so you can remember these. Sue Patton, Sue Pellin, Sue Reich, Kay Roberts, Jody Robinson, Gerald Roy, Eileen Sullivan, Ricky Timms, Debbie Gail Tirico, Jessica Vandenberg, and Vacuum Center, Innova, Genome America, Junkie America Inc., Koala Cabinets, OFA, FOF, sponsored by Showing the Another thing Bill and Meredith did was build partnerships with the leading companies in the quilting industry. Today, these companies help make AQS Quilt Week and the contest awards possible. And those sponsors for this year's show are A1 Quilting Machines, ABM International, AccuQuilt, APQS, Babylon USA, Bernina of America, Brother International Corporation, Coates and Clark, Elna USA, Flynn Quilt Frame Company, Gamble Quilting Machines, Hobble Sewing, Handy Quilter, Hobbs Bonded Fibers, Horn of America, HQ Sweet 16, Husqvarna Viking, sponsored by SNR Sewing and Vacuum Center, Innova, Genome America, Juki America Inc., Koala Cabinets, OFA, Foth, sponsored by Showing Machines, etc. Quilt Path by APQS. Quilt Seminars at Sea. Quilt Easy. Robert Kaufman Fabrics. Rotary Club of Paducah. Sewing Parts Online. Statler by Gamel. Superior Threads. Tin Lizzy 18. And last, but certainly not least, Wonderfill Specialty Threads. Let's give a big round of applause for this wonderful <laughs> This year, AQS will be holding two shows here in Paducah. This show in April and the second show September 13th through the 16th. Why would we do two shows? Quilters have attending the Paducah show on their bucket list. I hear that all the time. 
And this will give you two opportunities to attend a Quilt Week show here in Paducah, one in the spring and another in the fall. One of the things that will be different is the quilts for the fall show will all be new. Whatever quilts you see this week will not be here in the, at the fall show. And so just a little bit about the contest that we're doing because it is totally new and different. And that is that we will be doing the judging like we normally do. Where the judges come in and they will award first, second, third, and honorable mentions in each of the 15 categories. The difference is the public will take an active role as judge and critic. The top seven prize winners will be awarded based on public votes. We'll take the first place out of the 15 categories and you will get one vote for one quilt that deserves a spot in those final seven. All of the quilting or all of the voting will begin on Tuesday night when we do our um, uh, and when we do our uh, premiere of the contest and so that will be 6 p.m. on Tuesday and it will run until noon on Friday and then we will announce the winners on Friday evening. And so what are those words going to be? You're going to like this if you're a contestant. The Genomia America Best of Show will again be $20, the same as it is this, year, this week. Oh, did I say $20? <laughs> I really meant $20,000. And then the next award will be the Gamo Best Wall Quilt, and it will be chosen from amongst the wall categories, and that award will be $11,000. And then we will have the next five places based on the number of votes, and they will receive 10,000, 9,000, 8,000, 7,000, and 6,000 um, dollars. Okay, so we've done some different things with the categories as well. You're going to see categories for applique quilts, pieced quilts, embellished quilts. You've been asking for that, and we've changed it by quilting method for a while at this show. And so we're going to have it different for the fall show. We also will have first entry in an AQS contest. And that will be both for the large quilts and for the wall quilts. We're going to have pictorial, whimsical. A lot of you are making floral and, and animal quilts. And so we have a category called flora or fauna and art quilts. So I hope that you will go to quiltweek.com and click on the contest tab and go in and check out the rules. Now, you still have time to enter that show because the deadline isn't until May 5th. You're going to get home on Monday. You still have four whole days to get that online entry done. The fall show will also kick off on Wednesday with Jenny Doan of Missouri Star Company. And she's going to be presenting her teaching trunk show using pre-cut fabrics. And you won't want to miss this event because it's not only fun, but it also is educational and it's all going to happen right here on this stage. Now, I don't know if you all know the status of the new Holiday Inn Paducah Riverfront Hotel. I'm going to tell you where they are. It's still under construction, right? <laughs> And it will uh, will be open for our fall show, though, in September. And they will begin accepting reservations on July 1st for both fall show 2017 and both shows in 2018. Now, they only have 123 rooms. So if you want to make sure that you get your call in early on July 1st. We're going to have a really fun scavenger hunt at the fall show. And we're going to have some terrific international exhibits. Freeform Patchwork by Danny Amazonas from Taiwan. And if you've seen any of his work on Facebook, I can't wait to see it in person. Denim Art by Ian Berry from the United Kingdom. And Pam Holland, fiber artist from Australia. So make your plans to enter your quilts. Remember, you have until May 5th. 
and registration will open for the fall show on June 13th for AQS members. Now, if you're not an AQS member, before June 13th, go in and, and become a member because you get advance notice. You know, sometimes people complain that they don't, they don't get the, the first crop of classes or the choice of their classes. If you're a member, you'll get that link. If all of you will get it at the same time, but it goes to members first. Tonight, we are pleased to have with us Victoria finley Wolf. Victoria has been exploring the double wedding ring pattern and has put her own twist on that very traditional design. So let's let her tell us the story about that journey. Please welcome Victoria Finley Wolf. Good evening, everybody. Oh, it did told me I wouldn't be able to see anybody in the audience. That is true. Well, I am super excited to be here. I have been at the Duke before, uh, teaching at the museum. So this is my first time at Quilt Week. Are we ready to have some fun? Yeah. That was kind of quiet. Really, are we ready for some fun? Yeah. That's what it's all about. This quilting, should, you should be having a good time. Otherwise, I don't know what you guys are doing here. Okay? So let's have some fun. Um, I do have an exhibit up at the Dome Pavilion that I hope that you guys will get over to see this week. Um, I feel like I'm in a safe place, I can say this. I have a serious double wedding ring problem. I don't know, has anybody made over 60 double wedding ring quilts in here? <laughs> no, you laugh, I don't know what that means. So I, I have made a few double wedding rings. Um, part of my journey when I'm making a quilt, which is probably like a lot of you, I'm looking at each of these patterns. I love traditional patterns. I love looking to see what I can do with it. I feel like I don't always have to invent the wheel. I can start with the bones and, and build on that. Um, so the first quilt I wanted to just show you quickly was my greatest possible trust quilt. Um, everything that I do, I don't know if you, many of you know um, me or my work, but most of what I do is based on what I learned from my grandmother. So many of us may have learned to sew with our grandmothers. I am no different. But my grandmother made quilts with double knit polyester. <laughs> How many of you have made a double knit polyester quilt? Ah, I see a hand. One. That's it? Two. Okay, this is good. We're off to a good start. Um, so when I first made my first double wedding ring quilt, I was looking around my studio trying to figure out what was something new and different that I could do. And I had just gotten a double wedding ring set and thought, well, I would made a quilt top that I wasn't crazy about. So guess what I did? I cut it up. And I turned it into a double wedding ring quilt. And an amazing thing happened when I did that. I found a whole different design within a design, and that totally excited me. And I wanted to see where else I could go. And I started making some very personal connections with, within that quilt. And as I was making that quilt, and all the little hairs were standing up on my arm. I don't know if you guys get that as a feeling when you're designing a quilt and all of a sudden everything falls into place. It's your intuition telling you you just made a personal connection to it and now it becomes something really special. So as I was making that first double wedding ring quilt, I thought, oh, well, I had another idea. Well, what if my grandmother and I had never been able to make a quilt together? And this is what came out of making a quilt based on my grandmother's scrap piecing, because her quilts would have been done in the, whoops, go back one slide, please. There we go. Playing with my scrap fabrics, and then at the same time when I was working on these, it was, it was that conversation between modern quilting and traditional quilting. So I really was trying to play with that story. If I had made a quilt with my grandmother, how would those two sort of blend together? So you know those coloring books that are super popular right now? They're all on sale at Barnes & Noble, a long line of them, right? So it's like looking at those shapes within the pattern itself when we go in and we color a certain color within each of those shapes. But I like to look at that traditional pattern and decide, can I put five colors within that shape? Can I do 20 colors? Or can I take color out of it and come up with something that's going to tell the story? So this quilt was really about showing how, if my grandma and I could have sewn together what that might have looked and meshing the sort of modern and tradition. So, I, as I did say, I made 60 of them. The next quilt is Bright Lights Big City. 
So I played a lot. You'll see in the exhibit that I've gone from complete miniature versions of the double wedding ring to the traditional scale to also blowing it up quite largely. And also just looking at one pattern and sometimes just changing one thing within the pattern. So this one is quite huge. It makes some very big melons uh, within the double wedding ring. And then if you look at the next quilt, which is called Retro Poly Mod. Yeah, I heard you laughing. You're laughing at my polyester quilt, aren't you? I get a lot of comments on this. People say, wow, that is some color palette. And I say, yeah, what can you do with your stash of double mint polyester? <laughs> I also am actually making a series of double mint polyester quilts. Do you know what happens when you tell people that you're building a whole collection of double knit polyester quilts? You get a huge amount of squishy envelopes that arrive in the mailbox <laughs> with no return address. <laughs> so thank you to any of you who contributed to my massive stash of double knit. And if you are looking to start making double knit polyester quilt, just call me. I've got some, I can hook you up. So anyway, this is um, an homage to my grandmother because all of her quilts were done with polyester. And I wanted to be able to make the quilt and finish it the way she would have because all of my grandmother's quilts, remember those big giant quilt frames that took up the entire living room, right? My mom and her sisters would poke the needle down and all the grandkids went underneath it and poked the needle up. And that's how those quilts got finished. And then my grandmother would, would turn the back of the quilt to the front and that's how my quilts got finished or her quilts got finished. So I did the same thing. My daughter actually tells me that she doesn't like my quilts so much to sleep under because I quilt the dog out of them. So when I finished this one, I laid it out on the floor for her and I said, so what do you think about that one? She picks it up and she's like, oh, I love it. It's light as a feather. And I thought, hmm. <laughs> that wasn't what I expected for a double knit polyester quilt, but I guess she's a girl after my own heart. So come by the booth or come by to the pavilion this week and check out the double knit polyester quilt and the rest of them. And there is also this other one that you might not be able to miss because it's nine feet by 30. I don't have a picture of it because I don't have a wall big enough at home to actually hang it up. So um, come by the booth, uh, the Juki booth this week. I'll be around, I'm lecturing, I'm teaching, and I can't wait to see you and to say hi and enjoy your week, okay? So do you want to find out about some winners? Yeah. Yay! Welcome to the 33rd Annual AQS Quilt Week Awards Presentation. We welcome those of you who are watching at home, hello family, on the live webcast of the AQS YouTube channel, Quilt TV. Before recognizing the winners in this year's Paducah Quilt Week contest, we'd like to introduce the winners of awards in contests conducted by the National Quilt Museum. The School Block Challenge 2017, sponsored by Moda Fabrics, Presenting the award is Anne Hamill. The contest is open. Oh, it's Frank! Hello, Frank. <laughs> Frank Bennett is the executive director of the National Quilt Museum. The contest, I think this is quite interesting, is open to all the students in grades K through 12 all across the United States. And the grand prize winner is Naughty Kitty in the City. This block was entered in the K through fourth grade level, made by Katie Kerlinger of Paducah, Kentucky.
Saturday night at the Honky Tonk Saloon. Robin Prospect, Rock the And the first place award is Migration Patterns, Sue Mogan, Mobile, Alabama. Congratulations to all our honorable members. Okay, next is the Judges Recognition Award, sponsored by Quilt Easy. Representing Quilt Easy is Mary Wagner Webb. The first judge, Katie Pasquina Mazepust, chose Bubble Wrap, Stephanie Zagver Rule of Denver, Colorado. Because she loves white in a quilt. Katie added, it gives such a crisp, clean look. The neutral gray areas in the white negative space allow the teal squares and triangles to sing. The circular quilting throughout intrigues me and creates a dynamic repeat pattern. I enjoyed looking at this quilt over and over again. The next judge is Paula Nadelstern, and she chose Over the Waves. Satsuku Matsushima from Shiga, Japan. Paula stated that this quilt is a marriage of many things of what I love most about quilt making. Every inch reveals another deliberate decision by the maker. It makes me want to meet her. Also, I'm intrigued by her reinterpretation of traditional blocks. I love the way the storm at sea has been engineered into a brand new, complete, and elegant story. And our third judge, Sue Nichols, chose Fusion Star by Pat Downey of Addington, Mass. Sue chose Fusion Star because it represents everything she loves in quilts. Beautiful fabric and colors, piecing and applique combined, excellent and thoughtful quilting, and a unique finished edge. This quilt sings and is a joyful celebration. Congratulations to all the Judges' Choice winners.
We are up to the miniature quilt category, sponsored by the Flynn Quilt Frame Company. Ann Hamill will be handing out the awards. Third place award, with a little, littler helper from my friends, Carolyn Buckman Mullins of Daniels, West Virginia. Carolyn fell in love with the design from the blue ribbon miniature quilts and had to make it. Techniques include paper and machine piecing, quilted on a movable quilting machine. Second place award, Merry Christmas, Aki Sakai of Tokyo, Japan. Aki loves miniature quilts and embellishing. She used hand applique, embellishments, hand embroidery, and hand piecing techniques to create her original design. Hand quilting completes her beautiful Christmas quilt. And the first place award goes to Rose Mandala, Kumiko Friedel, Houston, Texas. this quilt to the memory of her mom, who loved roses and passed away in May of 2016. Her original design was created using hand embroidery, free motion quilting, shadowing, trapunto, and decorative stitches. Quilted on a stationary sewing machine. from Mayan artifacts. Her original designs include free motion quilting on a stationary machine, freestyle piecing, improvisational piecing, and a machine and paper piecing. The second place award, Gerona Portal, Laura Fogg, Ukiah, California. <laughs> Laura took dozens of photos of windows and portals in the ancient Spanish city of Gerona. As she studied the photos, a quilt took form in the layers of paint, plaster, and decaying wood. Laura used hand and rust dyeing along with machine applique and collage techniques, free motion quilted on a stationary frame. And the first place award, Flower Bed and Feathered Frenzy by Sue Cleveland. loves combining hand quilting with machine piecing, applique and quilting. The edge treatment includes double piping with a hand quilted undulated binding. Her original design was quilted on a stationary machine. Congratulations to all the winners of the small wall quilts. <laughs> Next up is small wall quilts. First entry in an AQS Paducah contest category, sponsored by ABM International. Representing ABM International is Rick Cherney. The third place award goes to the elephant in the quilt room, Elizabeth Owens, Defiant Springs, Florida. When Elizabeth saw a photo taken by her son of an African element in the Arindi Game Preserve in Namibia, Africa, her immediate reaction was, that's a quilt, which was quickly followed by, I wonder if I can make them in plaid. <laughs> the answer is a resounding yes. Elizabeth used a collage technique and free motion quilting on a stationary frame. The second place award goes to My Little Enchanted Compass by Christina Arsene Negui Bono from Guadara, Spain. Two years ago, Christina discovered the world of adult coloring books and immediately knew she had to do something related to that in a quilt. This quilt is her adaptation of one of Johanna Basford's illustrations. Techniques include thread painting and free motion quilting on a movable machine. And next is the first place award. 
Z is for Zinnia, C is for Cosmos. Kathy Curler from Portland, Oregon. to evoke a sense that the viewer is gazing into a garden overflowing with blooms. She accomplished this with machine applique, couching, embellishments, and hand embroidery, quilted on a movable machine. Congratulations to all the winners of the first entry in an AQS Paducah contest, Small World Gold Cup. Small Wall Quilts, Pictorial Category, sponsored by Husqvarna, s &R Sewing and Vacuum Center. Representing Husqvarna tonight is Anne Hamill from AQS. Third place award goes to Summer Solstice, Lee Gravels, Edmonton, Canada. <laughs> Lee captured the glowing view from her studio window as the longest day passed into night. She used 200 batik fabrics in her improvisational piecing and quilt as you go techniques, quilted on a stationary frame. The second place award, Autumn Evening, Barbara Oliver Hartman, Flower Mound, Texas. <laughs> Barbara used confetti method of construction where scraps are cut into tiny pieces and sewed down by machine without using any glue, paste, or fusing. The secret is to work in a small area at a time. Autumn evening was free motion quilted on the stationary frame. And the first place award, Best of the Northwest, for Kathy McNeil of Tuala Washington. Mount Rainier appears to rise out of the sea from many of the small islands of the Puget Sound. The houses in the iconic village are actually most of Kathy's favorite buildings on the island, including the O'Connor Quilt Museum. Techniques are hand appliques, Suneco inks, interfacing, machine piecing, and free motion quilting on a stationary frame. Congratulations to all the winners of the Small Wall Quilts Pictorial Category. Small Wall Quilts, Movable Machine Quilted Category, sponsored by Juki America. Representing Juki America is Karen Farr. The third place award is a Silver Lining by Lisa Kaye, from Potsdam, Pennsylvania. The second place award goes to Wickedly Green, Deborah Poole, Shelley, Idaho. <laughs> this quilt was an experiment in linear precision, hence the Wickedly. It took Deborah nearly eight months and 293 hours of hand-guided quilting to complete this quilt. Beading, crystals, and embellishments add to the beauty of the quilt, free motion, and matchstick quilting on a movable machine. And the first place award, Springtime in the Geisha's Garden by Margaret Solomon Gunn in Gorman, Maine. <laughs> a palette of Asian-inspired tough fabrics and the background for a floral garden. All quilting is original and hand-guided on a movable machine. Other techniques are hand applique, bias work, crystals, paper piecing, and piped edging. Congratulations to all the winners of the Small Wall Quilts Movable Machine Quilted Category. <laughs> Small Wall Quilts Stationary Machine Quilted Category, sponsored by Koala Cabinets. Presenting the award is Anne Hamill. The third place award goes to Amazonia Rosani Gunk of Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. <laughs> Rosani's inspiration was Mother Nature. She used linen fabric and brought depth to the work using different colors of threads. The result is a delicate yet strong quilt, free motion quilted on a stationary frame. The second place award, the Goose Factory, Claudia Clark Myers from Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> Ruth Goldberg's fantastical 
the machine's fascinating Claudia. Here is her vision that takes the traditional flying piece block through the factory assembly line, eventually turning out real baby goslings. <laughs> Techniques include fused and machine applique, embellishments, free motion, and machine embroidery, machine piecing. Free motion quilted on the stationary machine. Celtic Fox by Kathy McNeil to all of Washington. The Celtic Fox symbolized a need to think quickly and to employ cleverness and wisdom. Kathy's original design was created using hand applique, bias work, embellishments, interfacing, and fabric painting. Free motion quilted on the stationary frame. Congratulations to all the winners of the small wall quilt stationary machine quilt. representing Horn America tonight. The third place award is Serenite Andrea Stark of Neundorf, Germany. <laughs> Andrea's inspiration to create this whole cloth quilt was taken from diamond jewelry in the 19th century. Dense hand stippling enhanced the heart-shaped motifs. The second place award, card trick, Kyoko Hata, Kanagawa, Japan. challenges herself to make complicated piece patterns that can only be executed by hand. She used hand applique, hand piecing, and trapunto for this quilt, inspired by traditional woodcraft. The delicate geometric wood pattern was achieved with fabrics and piecing applique patterns. And the first place award, Cloudburst, Pam Beal, Mass City, Michigan. Pam is left-handed and quilts and uses tools with her right hand. Cloudburst was inspired by improvised small quilt studies that were used as sketches to explore shapes and the use of space. Improvisational piecing and machine piecing enhanced by beautiful hand quilting. Congratulations to all the winners in this small wall quilt hand. Innova. Representing Innova is Rick Cherney. Third place award goes to the English Garden, Tamako Takayuchi and Eight Friends in Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> Creating the feeling of a visual perspective was one of the most challenging parts of making this quilt for Tomoko's group. Applique and quilted by hand. The second place award goes to the Monterey Wharf, the Fab Five, Elk Grove, California. <laughs> this quote represents a personal photo. Each panel was designed and completed by the different artists, utilizing a variety of techniques, including machine piecing, machine applique, fabric painting, beading, couching, and hand embroidery. The quilting was done by hand and on a stationary machine. And first place award, Red, White, and Stars by the Austin Area Quilt Guild in Austin, Texas. <laughs> this quilt was created as the 2016 raffle quilt for the Austin Area Quilt Guild from the patterns Feathered Star Quilt Blocks 1 by Marsha McCluskey. Feathered Star Productions, and A Flock of Feathered Stars, Paper Piece for Perfection by Carolyn Colin McCormick of CNT Publishing. Techniques used were hand applique, foundation piecing, hand piecing, and machine piecing. Free motion quilted by Angela McCorkle on a movable machine. Congratulations to all the winners of this quilt. Wall Quilts, Modern Category, sponsored by Statler and by Gamma. Presenting the awards for Statler by Gamma is Jennifer Smith. Third 
place award, Meeting of the Geese, Sylvia Schaefer, Athens, Georgia. This quote is inspired by the North Wing Block. Although it reminds Sylvia of the flying geese blocks, it is made exclusively with half square triangles, machine piecing enhanced with matchstick quilting on a stationary machine. The Big Pickle by Vicki Rubel of Las Vegas, Nevada. Vicki designed this quilt so she could explore grid quilting on a larger scale. The simple design leaves a lot of negative space for intricate quilting. This quilt was featured in the November 2016 issue of Modern Quilts Unlimited, machine piecing with free motion quilting on a movable machine. And the first place award goes to Infused Plaid, Cassandra Ireland Beaver of Urbana, Ohio. <laughs> a simply pieced central design creates a canvas for matchstick quilting, coordinating with each fabric to move across the quilt, developing an overall plaid design quilted on a stationary machine. Congratulations to all the winners of the Wall Quilts in the Modern Category. Wall Quilts Pictorial Category, sponsored by Elna USA. Presenting the award tonight, I believe is Anna Hamill, right? You're happy to do that, right, Anna? Okay. The third place award, the Woman 2, Kyoko <laughs> in this series, The Woman, she depicted the woman motionless. Here she is attempting motion. Kyoko found that the woman's head to be the most difficult to form. Hand applique, hand piecing, and hand folded. <laughs> the second place award, by the chimney with care, Karen Turnbull, the woman Norwegian heritage. She even taught herself to make Norwegian hardanger lace to decorate the mantle and stockings. Other techniques include fused applique, beading, shadowing, and quilted on a stationary frame. The first place. So, go ahead. First place award is tagged by Patricia Kennedy Zaffron of Murraysville, Pennsylvania. Hand silk screen images. Hand silkscreen images on hand dyed fabric help create this quilt dedicated to the 30,000 children who were relocated to internment camps after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. Photographs from the Library of Congress and the Bancroft Library, University of California, Berkeley were used with permission. Techniques, fused applique, hand dyeing embellishments, photo transfer, and machine piecing quilted on the stationary frame. Congratulations, all the winners of the wall quilt pictorial category. We're up to the wall quilts, the movable machine categories, representing Tim Lizzie 18, Daniel Floyd, and Lynn Bell. Who are representing? Are they in the house? Okay, third place award, the Baltimore Journey, Darlene Donahue, Hilton at South Carolina. Darlene spent four years creating the hand applique and hand embroidery and decorative stitching for this quilt using the pattern Friends of Baltimore by Sue Garman, quilted by Ruth Quinn on a movable machine. Second place award, Kathy Cho, Patty Sandage, and Elle Smith of Middleton, Tennessee.
What started as a whim turned into a stunning quilt. Patty and Elle designed the quilt in EQ7 and incorporated beading, crystal, silk ribbon, embroidery, fabric origami, English piecing, hand piecing, machine piecing techniques, and quilted on a movable machine. Okay, large quilts, first entry in the AQ 
U.S. Paducah Contest category sponsored by Gamel Quilting Machines. Representing Gamel tonight is Jennifer Smith. The third place award goes to Monique's Mosaic, Rhonda Pierce of Sydney, Australia. <laughs> Inspired by tile floors in Italy, the mosaic medallion in the middle with 14,000 half-inch paper piece hexagons, this stunning mosaic is hand quilted. <laughs> the second place award, Wind of June, Ritsuko Uchida of Tokyo, Japan. This gorgeous quilt was made as a gift for Ritsuko's husband on their 37th wedding anniversary. Exquisite hand applique, hand embroidery, trapunto, and hand quilting. And the first place award goes for Imperial Star Ben Darby, Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> Various quilts by Edita Sitar were Ben's inspiration. Adidas applique shapes found a new placement in Ben's quilt. Techniques include fused applique, machine applique, machine piecing, and free motion quilting on a stationary frame. Congratulations to all the winners of the large quilt. It's first entry in the <laughs> Large quilts, movable machine quilted category, sponsored by Hobbs Bounded Fibers. Representing them tonight is Stephanie Hackney. The third place award, homage to Sally Ann, Gail Smith, and Angela McCorkle of North Barrington, Illinois. Piped edging and hand applique showcases the free motion quilting beautifully. This pattern is an adaption of a quilt made by the Sally Ann Nelson in 1850, patterned by Di Ford Hall, primar primarily patchwork computer-aided quilting on a movable machine. And the second place award goes to Phoebe of Christine Sudbury, Tampa, Florida. Christine wanted to create a quilt different from any of her previous quilts, but one that would also challenge her ability to personalize the execution of the design. She chose the Phoebe pattern by Di Ford Hall from Quilt Mania magazine and ex executed it beautifully. Techniques include hand applique, bias work, hand embroidery, and hand piecing. Free motion quilting on a movable machine by Chong Crockett. And the first place award goes to Nighthawk by Claudia Clark Myers. <laughs> and was meant to be a simple, straight-set bed quilt, but it had a mind of its own and gradually morphed into this beautiful design. Claudia Marilyn used fused applique, machine applique, free motion embroidery, fabric painting, foundation piecing, paper piecing, machine piecing, free motion quilting on a movable machine.
This quilt is a second large whole cloth that Rochelle has made using free motion embroidery and Trapunta to enhance the design. She loves the dimension it adds to the finished quilt. This original design was free motion quilted on a stationary frame. The second place award goes to Wonderful War. I'm sorry, Wonderful World by Karen Stone of Salt Lake, Texas. made this quilt for herself, using machine applique and English paper piecing techniques enhanced with free motion quilting on a stationary machine. She says it's no accident that the soft limited palette works with her pottery barn duvet cover. <laughs> or true, I was just checking to make sure you're awake, but that's true. And the first place award goes to Family Reunion, Barbara Ann McGraw, Denton, Texas. This quilt tells the story of Barbara's family. For many years, she listened to the voices of her ancestors and family, now gone, and finally felt compelled to answer those voices with this quilt. Techniques are hand applique, beading, crystals, decorative stitches, dimensional work, embellishment, silk ribbon, embroidery, red painting. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cry if she cries. <laughs> Photo transfer, ruching, shadowing, trapunto, and free motion quilting on a stationary frame. Congratulations to all of these winners of the large quilt stationary machine quilting category. You waiting for anything else? <laughs> Do I can get to the major awards? Moving on? Keep it moving? Okay. Best Wall Movable Machine Workmanship Award. Sponsored by Handy Quilter. Representing Handy Quilter is Nate Aronson. The Handy Quilter Best Wall Movable Machine Quilting Award goes to the Navigator Star, Aline Bergen and Natasha Bergen in Sao Paulo, Brazil. of the stars. The design was created from a metric of elements that guide the navigator, such as a ship's rudder, the compass, and the stars themselves. The navigator star features dimensional work, thread painting, thread sketching, and free motion quilting on a movable machine. Congratulations to the handy, for the winner of the Handy Quilter Wall Movable Machine Workmanship Award. Stationary Machine Workmanship Award, sponsored by Brother International Corporation. The Brother International Corporation Best Stationary Machine Workmanship Award goes to Country Roads by Joanne Bake of Banana. <laughs> She used fused applique, machine applique, confetti, hand dyeing, free motion embroidery, inking, interfacing, fabric painting, thread painting, shadowing, thread sketching, and free motion quilting on a stationary machine to create her country scene. We're up to Best Wall Hand Workmanship Award, sponsored by Coates and Clark. The Coates and Clark Award, Best Wall Hand Workmanship Award, goes to Agua Clara Lucia Sousa of Sao Paulo, Brazil. <laughs> Lucia is passionate about crystal clear waters and wanted to make a quilt of solid fabrics. Adding simple embroidery stitches created the illusion of prints. This quilt was made by hand, hand quilting, hand applique, and hand embroidery.
Congratulations to the winner of the Coates Park Ball and Hand Workmanship Award. I'm sure nobody's waiting. <laughs> the Robert Kaufman Fabrics Best Wall Quilt Award goes to Silk Road Sampler, Melissa Sabatko, from Texas. Suneco inks and free motion quilting. Congratulations for the winner of the Robert Kaufman Fabrics Best Wall Quilt Award. The Best Movable Machine Workmanship Award, sponsored by American Professional Quilting Systems, presenting the award is Angela Hoffman. The APQS Best Movable Machine Workmanship Award goes to. Moonflower, Molly Hamilton McNally. <laughs> Molly loves daisies. Even in drought stricken California, they bloom abundantly by the roadside. In moonlight, they seem to glow and for centuries were called moonflowers. If you look closely at the edge of the moon, every petal in the half daisies in Molly's quilt is designed to be different quilting hand applique and quilted on a movable machine. Congratulations to the winner of the HQS <laughs> The Best Stationary Machine Workmanship Award, sponsored by Bernina of America. Presenting the award from Bernina America is John Carr. The Bernina of America Best Stationary Machine Workmanship Award goes to Captivated by Nature, Olga Gonzalez and Guillo Sen Feliu de Gouche, Spain. Rosa Rojas. Olga wanted to capture the power of nature. 
feature using black and white tiles of different shapes and textures. Quilting on a stationary machine enhances and fuse machine applique techniques. Congratulations to the winner of the Bernina the Best Stationary Machine Working for the Year. The American Quilter Society Best Hand Workmanship Award is sponsored by the American Quilter Society. Presenting the award for the American Quilter Society. Are you, Bonnie, going to do that? All right. Bonnie Browning is going to be doing that. The AQS ben Han Best Hand Workmanship Award goes to Gold Wedding, Tammy Hashida, Chiba, Japan. Trapunta to create this quilt to celebrate her golden wedding anniversary. Congratulations to the winner of the AQS Best Hand Workmanship Award. Thank you. 